you're listening to the Visibly Fit Podcast. Hey, I'm your host, Wendy Pett, and every week I'll give you holistic, practical solutions for everyday issues related to nutrition, healing, functional fitness, and behavior modifications. As a natural path fitness expert and wellness coach for over 20 years, my goal is to empower you to reach for greater health and to rise up to your next level of living in mind, body, and spirit. You were created with greatness in mind. It's time to own it. Are you with me? Then let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Visibly Fit. I'm your host, Wendy Pett. You know, the holidays are right around the corner. And with that comes, quote, unquote, we use air quotes, yes, the word interesting, interesting emotions and, well, some family and friend drama sometimes. And so if you begin to get a little bit of heart palpitations with the mere thought of the holidays and the festivities, I want you to lean in today because I have a special guest with us, and she's going to give you some hope as well as practical ways to move through this time with greater ease. I have Dr. Michelle Bankston, and she has been a board certified clinical neuropsychologist for almost 30 years. She is a multi award winning author of Hope Prevails Insights from a Doctor's Personal Journey Through Depression, and also Hope Prevails Bible Study Breaking Anxiety's Grip How to Reclaim the Peace. Uh, the peace God promises. And then also today is going to be a good day. 90 promises from God to start your day off right. Ooh, I like that. And that is releasing in May 2022. So you want to get your hands on that one. But she is an international speaker, podcast host. Uh, she's a She's just a coach who's on a mission to restore hope and renew minds and empower others to live in their God-given identity. This doctor knows pain and despair firsthand and combines her professional expertise and personal expertise and experience with her faith to help others be all God created them to be. Using sound, practical tools, she affirms worth and encourages faith. Dr. Bankston offers hope as a key to unlock joy and relief even in the middle of the storm. Throughout her career as a clinical neuropsychologist and now as a speaker, author, podcast host, and coach, she encourages others to focus less on their self-esteem and more on how God esteems them. I love that. By knowing his truths offered in scripture. She loves offering practical um, resources to help you grow in your walk with the Lord. And if you want to check out more, I'm going to give it to you right off the bat. Go to drmichelleb.com. But welcome to Visibly Fit. Dr. Michelle Bankston. We're so glad to have you with us today. Oh, it's a delight to be with you, Wendy. How are you? I'm really good. I'm looking forward to the holidays this year. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. I am too, but sometimes people do get a little anxious. And in fact, um, you know, it's, it's supposed to be a joyous time, right? But the National Alliance of Mental Illness actually states that 64% of people with mental illness report that the holidays make their condition even worse. And, and just thinking about that 64%, that says a lot because 40 million adults in the U.S. are dealing with that you know, very common mental illness of anxiety. And that's just that little sliver of the mental illness department, right? So let's dive right into what do you think all the angst is all about? You know, Wendy, largely anxiety comes from feeling out of control. And so people will then respond with trying to get control of their feelings, of their emotions, of other people. And during the holidays, that's what makes it so difficult because we want to have that perfect holiday that, you know, Martha Stewart magazine perfect table Norman Rockwell yeah that's right (laughs) now we all desire that but it's an unrealistic expectation and that can really just make anxiety go through the roof but then you also have the practical things that bring anxiety like spending too much money that's not in your budget you know and travel We can't control the airlines. We can't control if flights get delayed or if our luggage doesn't make it to where we're going to go. So those are some of the things that just make this time of year even more anxiety provoking. And that's without even throwing a global pandemic on it. Right. Yeah. Put that 
<laughs> put that in the mix and man, that's a, that's a whole ball of, of, uh, uh, feelings. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Well, I want to, before we dive into some, um, practical tips and solutions and ways for people to feel at ease this year and look forward to the holidays. Cause that's what we're supposed to do. This is a joyous time and really can be. And so, um, I, I want the listeners to hear actually your story because you do know firsthand about what it's like to deal with anxiety and depression. So I want to get a little bit of backstory about Dr. Michelle Bankston first. You know, it's interesting because when I felt like the Lord put on my heart to write a book about depression, I knew what it was going to look like until I went through a very severe life-threatening illness. And during that time, I was on medically induced bed rest for five months. I was kept alive on IV hydration and nutrition. I went from 113 pounds down to a skeletal four, which 74 pounds, which for frame of reference is 30 pounds lighter than I'm sitting in front of you today. And it was a really difficult time. And I remember thinking, God, if this is what my life is going to be, I'm not sure I want to keep on living. Mm. And the longer it went on, the longer and harder the depression began to hit. And I have a family history of depression. My mother experienced severe, severe clinical depression, as did her sister and my grandmother. So I had the genetic predisposition anyway, Mm -hmm. but when that difficult life crisis hit and I wasn't sure who am I, if I can't be that doctor seeing patients every day and I'm not being much of a wife or a mother, who am I? Mm -hmm. And I plunged into that pit of despair. And I remember the Lord telling me, if you are not going to address the spiritual roots of disease. It's like you're putting a Band-Aid on an infection and hoping it gets well. And that came after I tried most of the common suggestions I would give a patient who came to my office. You know, let's make sure that you're eating right. Let's make sure that you're getting physical exercise. Like make sure that you have a consistent sleep schedule. I got on medication. I went to counseling. So I was doing all the things, Right. right? But it wasn't enough. And it was largely because I was leaving the Lord out of what does the Bible say about this and what do we need to know? And what he really showed me, Wendy, is we have a very real enemy. John 10 10 tells us the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I'm so thankful that that verse doesn't end there because our hope comes in the second half of that verse where it says, but I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. And so I thought, Lord, you promised a life to the full. So we're not going to continue this. You've got to show me how to navigate this so I can get out of this pit. And he did. So I wrote my first book, Hope Prevails, Insights from a Doctor's Personal Journey Through Depression. And then readers kept saying, when are you going to write a Bible study to take us even deeper? And I was like, oh, no, I don't do Bible (laughs) studies. I'm not Beth Moore. I'm not Priscilla Shire. No, no, no. But they kept asking. And so I prayed about it hoping that the Lord would let me off the hook. I'm like, Lord, who am I to write Bible studies? And I remember him making this impression in my heart. And it was as if he was saying, Wendy, you might not write Bible studies, but I write the best of them. Mm, that's so I knew I was supposed to do that. And no sooner did that book get published and people started writing and saying, now when are you going to write a book on anxiety? Because so many of us who struggle with depression also struggle with anxiety. Mm-hmm. And that's where Breaking Anxiety Script came from. I had struggled with anxiety and I have a whole family lineage filled with anxious people. So much so that when we go to a family reunion, it feels like I'm walking into a walking anxiety clinic. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I knew that book was important, but I didn't know that God would release that book two months before a global pandemic hit. And we were already seeing high levels of anxiety, but that just took it to an all new high. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, You know, I, and I know you believe this too, but God, God doesn't waste anything. And so as you were dealing with the, your own levels of pain and depression and anxiety, he's like, I'm going to burst forth something that people can really apply to their lives to, to, to help them. And not that you didn't have uh, helpful solutions as a doctor and, and a neuropsychologist because you did, but to actually be in it and to have that extra dose of compassion and understanding and, and all of that is huge. But you said something that I want to back up to uh, earlier. You said 
uh, about, well, you weren't being this doctor that you were before, this mom that you were before, this spouse. And so sometimes I believe that that, um, that identity, uh, that, that label that we put on ourselves, if we're not showing up in that space or able to in that moment, then we just kind of feel like we're worthless. And that's a lie, right? right? My identity had been grounded in what I did. Mm-hmm. I grew up with a a type A father and developed some of those tendencies myself, very much a perfectionist. And so I really took the perspective that if I wasn't able to do for my patients, then I wasn't doing for the Lord. And somehow I would be found less acceptable in his sight. And he used that time when I was not able to do anything but pray, listen to praise and worship music and watch sermons online use that time to show me that, you know, if I never saw another patient, if I never worked another day, he wouldn't love me any less. But if I went back to working these crazy 100 hour a week weeks, Mm -hmm. he wasn't going to love me anymore. He loved me not because of what I do for him, but because I'm his. Exactly. And because you, you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you just get to be and be with him. So I love that. And that's such a, a powerful message. And, and the fact that you've walked through so much yourself is powerful and, and you're an overcomer and, and that's what people can see in you. There's hope, you know, and I know that that's your message is that hope prevails. Hope is here and you can get on the other side, not, not in your own strength, but in God's strength. But, but with that, you are, uh, an expert, you are a doctor, and you you know you you have studied uh, neuropsychology for a long time and worked with so many people. And so I want to really dive into the aspects of of as we are going and moving into the holidays. What are some practical ways that people can literally change their their perspective and the lenses in which they they see others in and also in the way in which they show up in because you mentioned your family like you you walk into a a family room and it's like you know it's anxiety vibe all over the place so how do you show up so it doesn't feel that way so let's kind of talk through a couple practical uh, solutions for people I think what's really helpful especially when we are talking about the holidays and we're in gatherings that maybe, you know, we don't see these people very much except at these particularly stressful times of the year Mm -hmm. is to really take stock of what we can control and what we can't. Right. We can't control the motives of others. We can't control the actions of others or how they will react to us. Ooh, we right can't. there, right there. Repeat that. You can't control how people react to you. And I think that that's, that's a big one, right? You expect a different reaction. And then when it's not there, then either a wall goes up or there's a defense mechanism that shows up. And then it's like, whoa, uh, major anxiety. Absolutely. And when we think about the holidays, you know, we started off this episode talking about how we've got these expectations for the Martha Stewart or Norman Rockwell Christmas right. or Thanksgiving. But we all tend to walk into the holidays with expectations. We have expectations of ourselves. We have expectations of others. Others have expectations of ourselves. And I learned so much the value of letting go of expectations the year that my husband was diagnosed with cancer. There was just no way that we were going to have this picture perfect meal and all the decorations up and 12 different types of cookies to make everybody happy. And I felt like I was letting everybody down because these were their expectations. That year we put up a Christmas tree and it had the lights on it because it was a pre-lit tree, if I'll be honest. (laughs) And it had zero ornaments on it, Uh zero. And I felt so bad because I felt like I was letting my kids down. And I remember the Lord whispering to me saying, You put the tree up because they wanted a tree to have presents under. The decorations don't matter. You made their favorite cookies. All the others don't matter. You got gifts for them. It doesn't matter if they're not wrapped beautifully. Mm -hmm. And so he was really focusing me on let's make sure that we're taking care of what's really important, but not putting expectations on ourselves. And he was right. I have boys. They, they didn't don't really care. care. I know. I, don't care. 
It we was think me they putting do. it on myself. But we will have family who seems to put those expectations on us. You know, they expect to have a particular side dish at Christmas. And if it's not there, their whole Christmas is going to be destroyed. We have to go into these events. And if something is important, then ask them to bring it. There you We're go. not going to be Healthy able to boundaries. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. So if we let go of the things we can't control and focus on what we can, that will help lower the anxiety level. Things that we can control, we can turn off the news and the social media. Amen. If that's filling us with negative <laughs> thoughts and worry, if you're in anxiety over where the world is going, turn it off. Right. We can social distance if that's a concern that we have. We can control our own positive attitude. Mm -hmm. We can control our own kindness and gratitude. We can control how much we engage in our own self-care that will help our mood and responses to other people be stable and appropriate. We can control whether or not we're going to walk into a situation and determine to have fun regardless of what relatives might do. And we can control whether or not we're going to continue working on the goals and dreams that God has given us for the new year. So there are things that we can control that are within our ability. And then we let go of those things that we can't control. We can't control if Aunt Martha is going to show up at the table and spend the whole time talking about her aches and pains. Right. But we can redirect the conversation. We can know where some of the hot buttons are and plan ahead for how will we respond. We can nip those conversations in the bud and say, all right, now it's time for everybody to write down on that card in front of you what you're grateful for and turn that conversation away from the things that get under everybody's skin. That's so good. Yeah, flip the script and, and decide ahead of time not to be offended. Yes. Choose not to be offendable, right? And not to push other people's buttons because we know we know what gets under people's skin, and so um, it's it's a it's a, a both sided a two sided coin, right? Know what that looks like, and and show up and be just gracious and kind and loving, and and know that this is just a day. You know, we we say holidays. Well, we're thinking like you know Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's that's two days or New Year's three days. Yeah. Um, the rest of the time, I mean, if you could just show up and be kind on that day. Imagine what, what that holiday would actually turn out to be like. So um, I think that's a beautiful message. Now, a lot of things that we can control, because sometimes we send ourselves down a, a slippery slope and anxious uh, um, spiral, would be like you were mentioning about overspending or overpromising, having too much on our plate of, of saying yes to everything. Let's, let's kind of talk through that and maybe some practical tools around those two. You know, it's really important that we, first of all, that we pray about the holidays before we even start entering the season. Mm -hmm. Lord, what does that look like? What do you want me to do for the holidays upcoming? Who do you want me to invite? What activities do you want me to engage in? And what should I politely decline? We actually have a whole lot of control, Wendy, but sometimes we allow others to control us. People you pleasers, know, right? Absolutely. Be a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it comes back to we don't want to ruin their expectations. Yeah, or we fear don't. of missing out, right? FOMO. Absolutely. <laughs> but then we have no one to blame but ourselves when we're tired, when we're stressed out, when we're snippy at other people. And when we get to that day and we're just ready for it to be over. Yeah. Part of what we have to do first, aside from prayer and asking the Lord, how do you want us to spend the holidays? Who do you want us to spend it with? And then asking the Lord to give us his view of the people that we will be spending time with. You know, in psychology, there's this thing, it's called the narcissism of small differences. Mm -hmm. And what that really means is, you know, we tend to hang around people that we're most alike. Right, and our right. family is probably more like us than anybody else that we spend time with. But then when we get together, it seems to highlight the differences between us. And that's where the friction comes. Mm -hmm. So we've got to determine as we go into these holiday events 
that we are going to prefer and focus on relationship over the differences and relationship over perfection. Mm. The people who come to our gatherings, they're not perfect, but we aren't either. So if we can just recognize, look, like you just said, we've got a day or two or maybe three to be in the company of those we care about, we've got to decide that those differences are not going to cause friction between us on that day. And I would even go so far as to send in your email or your text message where you're inviting people, let them know ahead of time, we're declaring a truce for the day. We're not going to bring up politics or religion or COVID or whatever the hot buttons are in your family. We're not going to talk about that. We are going to gather and enjoy each other's company. Yeah. And that's celebrate Jesus day. around Christmas. Like that's, Absolutely. that's what it's about. It's not about a yeah. tree or presents or any of that. It's coming together to celebrate him. So that's, that's a good piece of advice. But we've got to maintain our own self-care, especially as women, we tend to take the brunt of the expectation for the meal planning, everything, the shopping, <laughs> the wrapping, the decorating. And I would say, If you've got children who are over six, you've got helping hands available. Teach them and make it fun. Let them help so that they're learning and each year give them a little bit more responsibility. But take care of yourself first. And what do I mean by that? Prioritize consistent rest. This is the time of year when we cram more into our schedule than any other time. And somehow, though, we think that we've got to stay up later to get it all done when in actuality, we're going to burn out faster. So prioritize your sleep. Yeah. And it's going to weaken your immune system and cause you to get sick. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Prioritize your nutrition. It's also the time of year when there are tempting things everywhere from the co-worker's desk to the Christmas party that you attend. But you've got to decide ahead of time what you're going to eat and what you're not and make sure that you are feeding yourself God's food. Mm -hmm. Those other foods are largely nutrient deficient and they're not going to help us maintain our mood, maintain our energy levels, and be able to respond appropriately. And then we get depressed after the holidays because we've gained the five pounds. But if you prioritize good nutrition, that will help your mood. Good nutrition. You're talking my language, yes. Well, (laughs) I'm all about you and I are so in sync (laughs) because we don't place enough emphasis on the food we eat and how it impacts our mood. Yeah, it affects our mental health big time. It does. Excess mm-hmm. sugar, as much as we might think it tastes good, is so bad because it will increase our anxiety, it will increase our fatigue, and it will increase that negative mood, even if not a full blown depression. Yeah. So, priority- and it will feed disease. So, stop it eating sugar, does. please. <laughs> yes. Another thing is, is that this is a time of year when we're going in a hundred different directions but you've got to prioritize physical exercise if you want to mitigate anxiety and depression. Now, I would love it if you would get 45 to 60 minutes of exercise a day, but I can tell you neurologically, only 10 to 15 minutes of physical exercise a day is enough to increase your ability to emotionally respond in the situation and decrease anxiety and depression. All of us can do 10 to 15 minutes a day, even if it means when you're out Christmas shopping, you park at the furthest spot away and you walk that extra distance instead of getting that spot close to the door. We can all do it. And I promise if you will focus on sleep, nutrition, and exercise, you've already got a great jump start to minimizing anxiety and depression through the holidays. 100%. And that's not just through the holidays. That's anytime. So it's about a lifestyle. So, um, but if, if you're not there yet and you really want to have an ease of of the holidays and you want to get started, this is a great time to start. Not like, Oh, new year. It's a good time. No start now so that you can have a a beautiful holiday time with your family. Um, Dr. Michelle. So with your experience and all that you've 
gone through with your patients and, and yourself, but, but mainly with your patients, what has been kind of the, the main, um, reason they come to you as far as, um, the reason they're anxious? Is there kind of a, a one that stands out more than the other? The biggest reason tends to fall back on that desire for control. Control. Yeah. Yeah. It really does. That leaves us feeling fearful. But what we need to mention, Wendy, is that depression and anxiety don't present the same way for everybody. I will tell you that when I start to feel fearful about something, I get angry. Mm-hmm. So it, it isn't obvious immediately to those around me that I'm worried, fearful, or anxious. It looks like I'm just mad. Which is usually how men deep. are. Right? Yes. They, yes. They tend, I mean, not to say like you're yeah. a man, but you know what no. I mean? Men no. tend to it respond that way. They get angry. The same thing with depression. Mm. Women are more likely to admit to feeling depressed or feeling down. Men are more likely to admit to feeling irritable or agitated. And that's yeah. a sign of depression as well. So if we will look at the people that we're spending time with and pay attention to how they're responding, that'll give us clues as to what's going on. And we have to remember, hurt people hurt people. And so when we gather, especially at family gatherings around the holidays, that's when old hurts and wounds come out. Those sibling rivalries that started in childhood they're still there. They just present differently in adulthood. And if we will walk in with a mindset that we are going to love them beyond anything they've ever experienced from us before, it will change our experience as well as theirs. Mm, I love that. That is, that is like the best advice ever. Just walk in, love them where they're at, love them anyway, and it'll change how you feel, change your heart, but also it could possibly change theirs. So I love that. Um, but when you say the, the biggest thing is usually a control situation, why, why do you think, you know, human beings tend to be wired in a way that they want to control? Is it a, a certainty thing? I mean, wh- what is it? I think it really goes back to the Garden of Eden. Okay, good. I thought you'd go there. I'm glad yeah, you are. Yeah, <laughs> it really does. It's re- it really comes from the enemy of our soul, that thief right. who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He is constantly attacking us and trying to get us to think that if we could only be better or look better or feel differently or have this car or have, you know, have this spouse or the perfect looking body, he's always trying to get us to realize our We're not good enough. weaknesses. Right. Mm-hmm. In, he did that with Eve when. And he said, but, you know, did God really say? And what he was trying to convince Eve is that she could be more like God if she would eat that fruit. Well, that's what we're trying to do when we want to be in control all the time. We're trying to be our own version of God instead of letting God be God. And that's part of what I try to explain to patients is, first of all, you've got the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You have the mind of Christ and you need to surrender to the Lord was the Lord's and do what he asked you to do, but recognize he's responsible for the outcome. And when we recognize that, that takes such a load and a burden off us to feel like if it's going to be, it has to be up to me. That yeah. is so not true. What we're responsible for is our obedience to God. Mm-hmm. He's responsible for the outcome then. Oh, Beautifully said. Yes, I was hoping you'd tap into that because, um, yeah, we're just so um, flawed since the beginning of time. And when we recognize that and, and surrender it, and it does, it, it relieves a lot of pressure and stress. And then, then, then there goes the anxiety and depression because you're not having to uh, try to control things. So very cool. Well, what is um, a couple things? What would be one thing that maybe a lot of people don't know about Dr. Michelle Bankston? What's a little something that that might be something that you do? Uh, maybe it's a, a special gift or talent or I don't know. I'm just curious. Um, probably the thing most people don't know is that my mother came from New Zealand. Oh, I and love New Zealand. <laughs> that's a very, it's a beautiful country. Uh-huh. But because she came to New Ze- from New Zealand to the United States to marry my father, 
she dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression. Mm. And so I can see where that was modeled for me. And that's part of the reason that I've had to struggle. But I'm also grateful to say that because I've gone through it, now I have a greater appreciation for what she experienced and what my patients experienced. You know, when, when, you, when you asked me to share my story and I said, well, I was going to write this book on depression to help people. Had I not gone through the depression, mm -hmm. that book would have been an entirely different book. It would have been a book written by a nerdy doctor instead of as a fellow sojourner who gets it and understands. Mm -hmm. And now people, when they leave Amazon reviews, that's usually what they say is she clearly gets it. She's been there. Mm -hmm. So God never wastes our pain. No, he does not. And you are doing a great, mighty work. And I'm so grateful that, um, that you've decided and you've chose the, the better instead of bitter part yes. of, of your journey. And um, none of our journeys are over until the day we die. But I'm so grateful that um, God has you on this path of really helping people through this uh, time. So um, as we wrap up today, and I thank you so much for your time, what would be maybe one word that wraps up who you are as an entirety um, and maybe um, give one little sentence of, of hope to the listeners? The one word would have to be hope. Of course. <laughs> it would have to be hope because what I've come to find out through working with all of my patients and then my own life experiences is that things can seem dire. But as long as God is still on his throne, our hope does prevail. Yes. Well said, my friend. Well said. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for giving some practical tips on how to get through the holidays and sharing your story. You're just a gem, and I love you dearly. I so appreciate God it. God bless you, my Thank friend. You. Thank you. Catch you next time. Okay. All right. So this was such a great opportunity um, to have Dr. Michelle Bankston on the call. So thank you so much for uh, tuning in today. I say the call, the podcast that she called in on Zoom. You know how that goes. But if you ever want to watch on YouTube, you can do that as well by going to my YouTube channel. And um, I just hope that you're blessed today and that you do feel like there is hope when going into the holidays and that you don't have to have anxious or any kind of um, you know, heart palpitations around this time of year. It should be a joyous time. It should be a time where, where you're you're really solidifying your your family roots and loving one another and just making it about the holiday itself. So Christmas, of course, it's all about Jesus, right? And and Thanksgiving, it's coming together and really having that gratitude and Thanksgiving for for all the blessings in in our lives. And and sometimes we may not see certain things in our life. Like, like Dr. Michelle, like what she went through as a blessing, but God does not waste anything. And so her going through the pain that she's gone through has been a blessing on the other side. So I invite you to, to view maybe your situation differently and to see that, wow, you know what, when I surrender this and I, and I get out of, of my own way and when I stop looking at my circumstances or situation in, in such a a way of woe is me or victim like and start to see it as what can God do through this and, and, and have that hope, then you show up in this world differently and people are encouraged by you and, and, um, and you offer, um, you know, you, you, you just show up differently and people want to be around you quite frankly. Right. And it, and it relieves any kind of, um, that depression or anxiety kind of feelings. So change your, your perspective, flip the script and you will be amazed at, um, how your life starts to change. So blessings to you all. Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode of visibly fit, and we will catch you next time. Make sure you subscribe and, uh, follow and leave a, a, a rating and a review. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right. Take care. Catch you next week. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. So thank you so much for tuning in. I love spending this time with you. To learn more and get more free resources, just head on over to wendypet.com. And thank you in advance for sharing this episode and this podcast, following and subscribing not only to this podcast, but finding me on social media, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, wherever you are, I'm probably there too. Until next week in our next podcast time together, make it a visibly fit day.